yesterday as we traveled the Lincoln Highway, we saw several of these roadside giants of the Lincoln Highway. We saw a giant pickup truck. We saw a giant quarter. And here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, we have yet another roadside giant of the Lincoln Highway. We have this massive gas pump. You can see the handle right there. It's this massive rusty gas pump sticks out in to the sky. Hey you all, Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the Lincoln Highway. We are standing here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, not only in front of this giant gas pump, but we are also in front of the Lincoln Highway experience. As far as I know, as far as I know, I could be wrong, I think this is the only museum completely dedicated to the Lincoln Highway. On Route 66, it seemed like you had a Route 66 museum in nearly every town in some form or another. But I think here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, the Lincoln Highway experience, I think this is the primary Lincoln Highway Museum. So please, let's check this out. Please follow me. Now we enter the Lincoln Highway experience through this, the Johnston House. This was the boyhood home of uh, Pennsylvania Governor William Johnston. In this first hallway here, we have some pictures of different uh, locations on the Lincoln Highway. Of course, yesterday we were here at the Shoe House. There's actually the stained glass door of the uh, of the shoe house. We were actually here yesterday as well at Lincoln Lanes, but unfortunately it was closed down and they actually had a different sign. They didn't have uh, the same sign there, but I recognize the, uh, the church there behind it. Stopped here yesterday at Dutch Haven and had a shoe fly pie. Here's the coffee pot that we saw yesterday. This is actually, I guess this is its original location. I had mentioned in the video that they had relocated the coffee pot to where it currently stands. You can see it's a much different area built in to this building right here. And here we have a map of the Lincoln Highway, Main Street across America. Now that's an important distinction. Main Street across America is the nickname of the Lincoln Highway. America's Main Street is the nickname of Route 66. So you got to keep that straight. Main Street across America. And you can see these lights that are lit up. These are actually where we've already been. We started here in uh, New York and made our way through New Jersey and across Pennsylvania. Hopefully today we'll be crossing over in to Ohio through Indiana. Illinois, they actually have a place where Route 66 and the Lincoln Highway cross each other and through Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming. It says that Wyoming has the highest point Lincoln Highway and the largest statue of Lincoln right there. As we go through Utah and Nevada. Now this is this is the part of the trip that I've been worried about. So this stretch of the Lincoln Highway runs nearly 250 miles and with only two towns in between. The stretch is Route 50, the loneliest road in America. That's some scary stuff. But then finally we can cross over into California into San Francisco. We actually have a bicycle set up here in front of the Lincoln Highway map where you can try to um, bike the entire Lincoln Highway. Looks like the last person that rode it did these three stops here. And again, like I said, this is basically where we've come in real life so far. So I guess uh, let's uh, go for a ride.
Okay, I may not have gotten very far, but I did at least add one more light to the highway. Apparently, if you can bike the entire Lincoln Highway by yourself, you get a free bottle of water. Says the average cost of a new car in 1919 was $826. Man, I'd buy two of them. Says there was more automobiles in the United States than telephones. I guess that means that uh, if, uh, if you needed to talk to someone, you didn't have a telephone, you'd have to drive to their house. That was the more efficient way back then. Some old maps here, the Lincoln Highway. There's an old hair dryer there, as well as an old telephone booth. Fortunately, we we're not allowed to play around inside the phone booth, but oh yeah, there is a phone in there. And it says here in 1919, the uh, United States military actually had a convoy that traveled from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco. So they used the Lincoln Highway. They didn't start in Times Square, but they started in Washington, D.C. and cut up here and brought uh, the military across the country. There's actually a monument in front of the White House, I remember, that uh, talks about this convoy. Some military items in here from the uh, Lincoln Highway convoy. And over here, an exhibit on women at the wheel a history of women drivers this is a 1909 22 year old alice ramsey was the first women woman to drive across the united states it says the girl scouts initiated an automobile badge for girls who could demonstrate their driving skills hmm. uh, were they too are they old enough girls <laughs> i guess when they turned 16 probably i assume i assume they didn't just get a bunch of eight-year-old Girl Scouts and let them drive cars. See, she's all geared up to drive. She's got her goggles, her scarf, and her driving gloves. A children's room in here. Some vehicles to be driven on the Lincoln Highway. Oh, there's this little station over here where kids can make rubbings of license plates. They have the license plates out there and the paper kids can put the paper over the license plate, use the crayon to create a rubbing. I remember they used to do this with gravestones, but I think it figured out it was actually damaging to, uh, to gravestones, but I don't think it's damaging to uh, license plates. A little raceway here. Let's see if we can... Oh, didn't make it. Exhibit on the SS Grandview Ship Hotel. It's a hotel here in Pennsylvania, made to look like a ship. Sadly, it burned down in 2001, so we will not be able to uh, to go see the real ship hotel. It says that you can see seven states and seven counties from the ship hotel. And then here's some items from the ship hotel have a chair there and some of the plates that were used pillows and pennant there here is the postcard corridor it said that you're encouraged to sit here and fill out a postcard from the lincoln highway and they actually provided a lincoln highway experience postcard with a postcard stamp already on it. All right, I think I will write a postcard to uh, to Jen. There we go. Now all I have to do is fill in her address right here. Well, actually, I'll probably do that. Uh, probably do that off camera. All right, let me just drop postcard here in the mail slot, and uh, that will make its way to Jen. Here we have one of the old Lincoln Highway markers. These used to dot the entire route. 
I don't know that there's any original ones left out there. So this one was made in 1928, and you can see it's a little worse for wear. We have a painted gas pump. This one actually has uh, Vincent Van Gogh on it. Oh, not Vincent Van Gogh. He's a gas station attendant. He's Vincent Van Gas. Vincent Van Gas. Now, unfortunately, I am not going to be here June 6th through June 11th because I showed up a little early because we're having Mr. Rogers' family days. Oh, man. That would have been awesome. Over here, they have a working diner, Sarah's Diner back in here. It says we can go inside and have a piece of pie. Right here inside the diner. My pie prepared right there as we look for a place to sit down. All right, we got a slice of cherry pie there, as well as some red ribbon cola. Said that they served that at this very diner since the 1930s. A piece of cherry pie there. Some ice cream. Mm. Got a big bite of ice cream now. Mm. Delicious cherry pie. And there's apparently is a twist off. A twist off. There we go. There we go. Mm. It's got an interesting cola flavor, a vintage cola flavor there, but pretty good. I find that cola is hard to get right. Usually, you know, Coke and Pepsi are good, but, but variations are different. That's, that's actually a good cola. So yeah, this was an authentic diner along uh, Lincoln Highway, but they uh, restored it and moved it here inside the Lincoln Highway experience. You can see the ABC motel sign there. You can look inside this old tourist cabin. The cozy little bed there. Little radio. Oh, look at that. They had the Disney Channel. I remember back in the day, Disney Channel wasn't on basic cable. It was a premium channel like HBO. And uh, if you had Disney Channel, you were awesome. This restaurant here is called the Road Toad. Actually, it looks like at least somewhat inspired by uh, Mr. Toad's wild ride. You got a toad driving that old-timey car. <laughs> Pretty amazing. And we have officially passed into state number four. We are currently in the great state of Ohio. So after taking a very winding route for the past few hours on the Lincoln Highway, we have finally landed here in Canton, Ohio at the McKinley Presidential Library and Museum. So I've been to several of the other presidential libraries I've been to. Abraham Lincoln, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, and Jimmy Carter. I've been to all of their presidential libraries. So we will now add President McKinley to the list. McKinley was the president before Teddy Roosevelt and um, his, his assassination. Uh, led to Teddy Roosevelt uh, initially becoming president. And Teddy Roosevelt, of course, one of the most uh, memorable presidents, one of one of my favorite presidents. But uh, yeah, he originally served under McKinley and then became president when McKinley was shot to death by a, a crazed anarchist, an anarchist that was against the United States government shot McKinley. And so we will head into the McKinley Library and learn more about Mr. President McKinley. Some information right off the bat on McKinley. And right there we see his hat. As we head downstairs, we go into this section called Discover World. We have a Allosaurus, according to this, Allosaurus's name is Alice. Make a roar by hitting the button there. Well, 
oh, you have to wait 30 seconds before pressing the button again, so I must have just hit it. All right, let's see if Alice is ready to roar. Oh, there she goes. There's the roar. That's what we were looking for. See the T-Rex head sticking out the cave there. And we have little tableaus of dinosaurs near. Interesting, they have dinosaurs in the McKinley Museum. Big giant mammoth skeleton there. Here is Ecology Island, the little waterfall and pond there. Oh, I see some animals dancing along the trees, some little possums right there. That's some sort of woodpecker. Oh, you can see they have a little turtle here in the pond sunbathing right there. And then over here we have a big old giant bullfrog sitting on the ledge. A lot of different things in this museum, not all necessarily related to McKinley. You can see this old kitchen here. And look at that, a little like sprite or elf there on the stove. And look at this, they have a laughing Sal here. Says that she was at an amusement park here in Canton, Ohio called Myers Lake Park. Seen other laughing Sal's at different amusement parks. They would laugh continuously to the amusement of all the patrons. It says push the button to hear the laughing lady laugh. There we go. She doesn't move, but she still laughs. Now here is the McKinley room. A lot of personal artifacts, furniture of President McKinley. It looks like we have a McKinley robot back there. Okay, so uh, I guess we hit this to make the McKinley robot work. Let's just get a welcome. It has been some time since I and I have hosted visitors. Please make yourselves comfortable. William and I do enjoy having visitors. As president, William receives guests from all over the world who come to meet and confer with him. May we offer you a cup of tea or coffee? We have some of that special coffee from the Danamella store over on Cherry Street. It is delicious if I do say so myself. I agree, I the Dan and Millers have quite a reputation for roasting some of the best coffee in the region. A lot of items here from McKinley. There's his nightshirt. Yeah, it's like an old uh, Scrooge McDuck style nightshirt. And there's a replica of the gun used to murder President McKinley. It says that this plate was actually attached to uh, McKinley's casket. They must have taken it off before they buried him. There's different campaign memorabilia, including, I don't know, this little, it's a little wax, it's a little wax baby. Has his top hat right there, along with his walking stick. And these are dumbbells that uh, McKinley would use to pump iron. This is the street of shops in here. You can see the old mail pouch tobacco barn there. It's an old gas station here. You can see the gas station attendant. His name is Dick. Looking under the hood of the Model T there. I can check out the saloon here. Oh, it looks like there's been some card games going on at the saloon. You can see the bartender pouring a beer, using his rag to keep the bar nice and shiny. Oh, it looks like there's some delicious eggs there at the end of the saloon. Here we have a dapper couple checking in to the local hotel. See the blacksmith shop. The blacksmith there, hard at work. Some these giant bellows to uh, heat up these coals and makes various iron items such as horseshoes. The doctor's office here, Dr. C.M. Hoover. A peek here inside. 
Okay. Let's see the doctor there. He's treating this little girl. Here's the dentist's office, Dr. J.H. Wibble. See the dentist there with all his equipment ready to work on the mouth of this small child. You can see the fear there in the little boy's eyes as he knows that the dentist is about to go to work on his mouth with these old timey dental tools. Yikes. Yeah, that would freak me out to see that plate of sharp metal sitting in front of me. Up here on the balcony we have the photographer's studio. See the photographer under the blanket there taking a portrait of that lady. You can see the old cameras, old photos, some tin types where they actually would print the photos on a piece of tin. Now this is interesting here. We have like a teacup style ride right here. So we sit down in here, push the button. Uh oh. Oh, and here we go. So we turn ourselves and then we start spinning. Yeah, just like the just like the teacups at Disney. Did not expect this. Okay, apparently, apparently this is to show teach you about ball bearings. So I guess you gotta push push the, the button to Lights off means there's no ball bearings, so you can just see how hard it is to, to move. How hard it is to move without ball bearings when the light was on. I why it won't turn back on, but when the light was on, it was much easier, I guess, because the ball bearings were activated. Yes, this chair you can see if a vacuum cleaner can lift you. A powerful suction of a Hoover will give you a lift. I guess you sit in this chair and it will lift you. And next to the McKinley Library, we have the McKinley National Memorial. That is actually the tomb up there of uh, President McKinley. He's got to climb up these stairs. There's a child sliding down the stairs. We climb up those stairs to visit uh, President McKinley and his wife. So I guess uh, we'll walk our way up to uh, the tomb. You can see the statue there of McKinley as he stands in front of his own tomb. Ooh, we made it to the top here. All right, we get to go inside and see McKinley. And there is the final resting place of William McKinley and his wife Ida under this big dome here. There's quite a view up here from the top of McKinley's tomb, but man, these stairs here, these are these are more intense than the than the rocky stairs. So near the McKinley Monument, we have Mother Goose Land, or at least that's what this wooden sign would have us believe. Now Mother Goose Land used to be a full-fledged Storyland park, but it does appear there's only one figure left over there. We do have these colorful set of tubes. I'm not entirely sure uh, what their purpose or function is. And over here we do have what appears to be a giant xylophone, but I didn't bring any of my uh, xylophone sticks with me, so uh, I cannot, you know, cannot tap out a tune. So here we have the one surviving figure from Mother Goose Land. We have Willie the Whale here in his little swamp. He's floating there. I guess 
and we peer into his mouth. Oh no. It uh, appears there's a lot of garbage and graffiti in his mouth and and it also uh, smells like smells like marijuana in here. So uh, yeah, people have been hanging out in Willie, eating eating beans and raisins, drinking Sprite. This is not good for a whale's digestive system. Poor old Willie. Used to entertain children of all ages. Now he's become a place to do illicit activities in, as well as a place to eat beans. So there's not much left of Mother Goose land here, but uh, someone has painted this pretty interesting mural here of uh, fairy tale characters. And look at that, we got Willie the Whale here on, uh, on the mural, but yeah, he looks, he looks a little bit maniacal here on the mural. Although maybe not as maniacal as uh, Humpty Dumpty over here. Here we have the three blind mice. You can see they're blind from their pupilless eyes. Like this one has fallen asleep. And they definitely chose an interesting art style for these fairy tale characters. See Puss in Boots there with his uh, with his sword, and then the three little pigs. Oh my! Oh no! Watch out, little pigs! At the uh, big bad wolf sneaking up on the pigs here. So I do get a lot of questions about uh, what kind of hotels I stay at on these trips. And generally, I, I try to find hotels that uh, are inexpensive but clean. I do like clean hotels. On this particular trip, I have been using the Priceline app a lot. I, I don't love using the Priceline app because I've had a few uh, really bad experiences um, just with I had, had some instances where I like I accidentally booked the wrong night and then they refused to cancel and, and things like that. It's really hard. Once you, once you book a Priceline room, you are very much locked into that. If you mistakenly book something wrong, forget it. You're going to have to you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, so I don't like to use Priceline a lot, but I have been using it on this trip. Um, and, and you have to be very careful. You have to kind of know your way around Priceline to know how to book uh, a room uh, successfully. I usually um, make sure that the room is rated higher than 7.5 on their 1 to 10 scale. Usually if you get, if you dip into like 6 or 5, you start getting into some scary territory. But anyways, I'm staying at a Travelodge. This is Travelodge by Wyndham. I don't think I've stayed at a, I'm sure I probably have stayed at a travel lodge before, but I don't remember. So I figure we'll do a room reveal. So this is definitely a motel. You can see the doors are actually on the outside. You park your car in front of the door. So uh, we will be, we're gonna be in room 137 here. Put that key in. And let's see what we got here. Ooh, I like all the interesting brown tones. <laughs> this uh, this old leather chair. This looks like an old chair. It doesn't look. It's not. It's not gross or nasty. It's just interesting. It's like an older chair. And then we got uh, a little green chair there. And the brown bed. Now I paid. What did I pay for this? I think I paid about seventy-five on uh, Priceline for this room. Uh, hotel rooms are, uh, for some reason, they've spiked. They're, they're, they're more expensive than they normally would be. But uh, I got the picture of a flower there. Got all the amenities we need. A desk to edit videos. A fridge to keep my diet orange soda 
cold and I don't really use microwaves in uh, in hotels. Let's see, the bathroom area here. It's always impossible to find where the lights are in the hotel. So, okay, there we go. So there we go. Hello, everybody. And uh, at the bathroom in here. Looks fairly clean, fairly decent. Nothing that's scaring me too bad right now. I guess there's a and then the slip pad's a little dingy, but that sort of thing happens. But the walls look nice and clean. No bad surprises. We do, however, need to test the softness of this bed through the trust fall method. Oh. Ah, pretty firm bed there. Not overly soft. Not overly cozy but uh, thank you guys so much for joining me on another day here on the Lincoln Highway it's uh just just trucking along here just trying to make this work um we'll be going where are we we're in Ohio I mean I don't think I've mentioned that we are in Mansfield Mansfield Ohio and we're gonna continue on through Ohio and into Indiana, hopefully tomorrow. I don't like to count my chickens before I hatch. I don't know where it will be along the route until I'm actually there. But uh, thank you so much. I'll be putting out new videos every morning as long as I am on the Lincoln Highway. Um, video, uh, Yesterday, I know it was a little late. I had computer problems, internet problems. Sort of thing happens on the road. When you, you check into a hotel, the internet's not good. And you have to fight to try to get it uploaded. A 37 minute video can, can take a while to upload. But uh, Lord willing, I will continue creating videos and releasing them the next day as we're here on the Lincoln Highway. Appreciate you guys so much. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you that postcard once a month from me to you. And we have the pins, five different pins in the Etsy shop. All that information is in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, my friends, this one's in the bag.